The other issue is, you know, we're, we're married and we want to stay married, so. Yesterday, Leela and I finished 75 Hard. One of the tenets of 75 Hard is to follow a diet. If you guys want to see pictures of us, post in the comments below. While you're at it, man, hit that like and subscribe because we don't need self-esteem anymore because we have some because we finished 75 Hard, but it's still nice. Something monumental is about to take place. What's going to happen, Leela? The first time in 76 days, actually, we're going to eat some pizza. It's your moral imperative to eat and enjoy that pizza. We drove two hours so we could find good pizza with a view. Look how cute she looks. She gained all this muscle, lost all this weight. She's just, what, can you believe she's a grandmother? We had our first cheat meal in 76 days. We had pizza and... There's a lot of things that are great about living full-time in an RV, but some things kind of blow. They're going to talk about things that kind of blow living full-time in an RV, but... We have solutions we have to these challenges. Well, good, look at you got right to the point. Good for you. Challenge number one, and this really was really, really hard to me, is I started missing my kids. I started missing my grandchildren. It's great traveling and experience everything. I just kept thinking, I wish I had them all like with me. And here's the solution. I finally said to Trevor, guess what? I just need to go see him. I hopped on planes multiple times while we were traveling and just went and spent like weekends and, and stuff so I could, I could see them. We had a really unique Thanksgiving. We were in the Gulf Shore in Mississippi. We had just gotten in. We thought, we better get some food. We barely made it into a grocery store. I think they were closing in 10 minutes. We went around and grabbed food and we cooked for the three of us. Definitely make sure that there's time planned out to see your children and your grandkids. I was good. I'm a dude, man. I know I'd see him again in a couple months. It was fine. It's, it's, a, it's a girl thing. My testosterone's significantly higher. Yeah, right. One of the big issues you're gonna have with your RV is you're gonna find that things break. Like, everything breaks. We've had almost everything in our whole RV break. My advice, put on some gloves and then drive it to your Cummins dealer and have them do it. Partially it's because we got a vandalized RV and we were fixing things as we went and partially it's because you're traveling, you're putting miles and bumps and junk on RVs and stuff's gonna fall apart. So, so what, what do you do? Well, number one, you gotta be handy. Get some tools. My favorite tool is my DeWalt drill. I use that thing pretty much every day. I got links for you know some of the tools I use down below. So get some tools. You've got the internet so you can figure out how to fix a lot of things. The other thing is don't be afraid to ask for help. When people know that you're living full time in an RV, they're gonna do their best to help you. We found the nicest people in the world, man, from a Ford dealership. Here's the Ford guys. They came all the way over here from way over there. To an RV repair shop. We are currently being towed by another dually. To just random people just offering to help. It's been pretty great. People will want to help you when you say, hey. I'm living in this thing full time. So what they'll do is they'll go, yeah, bring it in the morning and then you go on a day trip. We were having issues after our pipes froze and our propane wasn't working, we were freezing cold. So we dropped it off at this RV shop. We went to Telluride for the day and had a great time. Then we came back and our RV was, it was, it was ready. When we first started off, we kind of made some rules. Like we were gonna drive more than four hours a day. We weren't going to drive at night. Well, that went out the door really quite fast. I remember driving through Colorado, like climbing up these steep climbs. I had to put a blanket over my head because it was too scary. Planning and scheduling and finding places to stay, especially during the COVID, could be a challenge. Our worst experience with this was we were coming from Florida and I started getting these emails of all this stuff that I had planned and it would say, hey, we are shutting down the state. Your reservation has been canceled. I'd say, hey, Trevor, where's the closest Walmart? <laughs> We've slept in a church parking lot. Your tithing dollars at work. We've slept on the roadside. We've used Harvest Host, which absolutely love. Some Camping Worlds and some Cracker Barrels were places that you could stay at night. There are some things you can't control when you're traveling full time in an RV. Weather is one of those things, so you better make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into. Today's high will be 106 degrees. The best thing to do is to plan and make sure where you're going and what the weather is. We were leaving Bear Lake, Utah. We knew we were gonna be stuck in the snow. We landed in Colorado. We hunkered down in the snow. You can see how that turned out like over here. One of the other things that you wanna plan for and to know is that the air conditioner in an RV, it only 
cools down about 20 degrees above what the outside temperature. In Lake Mead, it was 117 degrees outside. The cold water was scalding coming out of our shower. That meant that 20 degrees, we were still 97 degrees with the air conditioner blasting full time. So what are some of the solutions? Get outside and go explore. We were just got ourselves in the water and played. But really plan, 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 plan. Lastly, it's probably a good thing that Leela's way over there taking pictures, I think. Yeah, see her? Because we need to talk about the one thing that everybody wonders about, which is privacy. In an RV, in our RV, we have one bathroom centrally located with a door that's got space above and below so you can hear everything. There is almost no privacy in the bathroom. Everybody knows everything. So that's the one, one issue. And the answer to that one is you just kind of get over it. It's me, Leela, and Kaylin. Just kind of get over it. The other issue is, you know, we're, we're married and we want to stay married. So I don't really need to say anything else about that, except that what's the solution? Well, the solution is for us, Kaylin tends to sleep in, so, you know, mornings were the best time for certain activities. We'll just keep this rated G. And the other issue is space, like time alone. Time to yourself to think. I mean, you're in 300 freaking square feet. You are with each other 24 seven, literally elbow to elbow, arm to arm, neck to, you're like, you're, you're jammed like sardines all day every day, to a degree. You know, it's just pretty tight. So what's the answer? Dude, go outside. We're traveling the whole freaking country, man. We're near beaches and lakes and rivers and mountains and streams and parks and just beautiful things. Just go outside. If you're living in an RV, full time or even traveling, don't just sit in the RV. The RV is just your container to get you around. It's not about the RV. It's about the world, getting out there and seeing things. And the best experiences we've had have been, obviously, outside the RV, meeting people, seeing the country, seeing how other people live, how different things are across our country. It's amazing. Take advantage of it. If you have a chance to travel in an RV, whether it's full time or just for a week or a month or three months, just you got to take it, man. Life's too short to sit around and have the same day every day. Yeah. Yeah. We had our first cheat meal in 76 days. We had pizza and it was terrible. Lily ate the salad. She couldn't even eat it. She took one bite. She's like, Ugh. Sometimes I can be a little picky, and so I even had him test it because it was so darn salty. What? Nothing. What are some of the challenges that you've had in RVing? And I have a question. Would you like to, us to share some more of our RV trips or our travel adventures? Write it in the comments below. And hey, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on some of our next adventures or travel tips. We can't wait to share our adventures with you. We're looking that forward to sharing our adventures with you. We can't wait to share our adventures with you. We're looking forward to sharing our adventures with you. What do you prefer? Sometimes you gotta take it for the wife. Oh, oh hey. They were cleaning the other side.